Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Extensions tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily make this useful little extension which connects to a free library of over 1400 free fonts through Google and it will just give you the option to easily interact with these, change some text in your extension, and you can use one of these for your extension itself or whatever project you have which uh, is an extension. And this makes it super easy to quickly find some text that you like or a font that you like, make modifications to your own extension, or just include it in your work. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates, as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member in our Discord server, make sure you join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can in the description down below by becoming a member or supporter. Comes in two tiers with different perks as well as helps us out. And also in the link down below, you can see uh, links to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to see some other cool stuff I make. Alright, so if you're not already familiar, there is a thing called Google Fonts, which are essentially just a ton of fonts given to us by Google. So basically the way you include it is by adding a little line at the beginning to include a style sheet coming from Google's API. And then you can also change the actual CSS of an individual element, your entire extension or whatever you want to use whatever that font is. So essentially we're gonna create a simple extension here using our extension testing base. We're gonna have a dropdown, which we're going to load in everything from the entire Google API of fonts. And we're also going to have a preview text, which whenever we change the value, it's going to update that text's style to include uh, that CSS from Google's API, as well as change the actual text. Now, this is as simple as the code is. We have a main function where we make a sort of a get request, which we're going to be using a custom function for this get request, just a simple HTTP request. We're going to get something from our URL and then get the response text. Uh, now, this is basically a URL endpoint that I just Googled, how to basically get all of the Google fonts listed out. And all we basically need is that list of fonts. We don't need any special naming or things like that. And this endpoint is going to give us an actual object, which we can then parse and do all this font changing stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and just strip all of this and keep the information that we want. And we're going to go over kind of how we would put this together. So to start, we're going to clear out just our main function here and focus on what we need to do to start in order to start from this blank UI and have our actual elements. So first, we're going to need a dropdown. So we'll say DD. And we're also going to need some preview text. So I'll just say preview text. Our dropdown is going to be equal to a document.createElement. And we're going to want to create a select element, which is basically a dropdown. If we want to set up other stuff, we can say dd.setAttribute, set the ID to dd, uh, just so we know that that is our dropdown we want to use. And then we're just gonna grab uh, get elements by tag name. We're gonna grab the body and the zero with body. There's only one body, of course, but we're gonna append our dd as that child. That should now create, a, actually probably gives us an error because we have this undefined. Um, create the element, get elements by name. Sorry, this needs to be by tag name. So now you can see we have that DD it has nothing in it. So it's very small. Uh, if we want, we could explicitly set the style dot width equal to like 220 pixels. And that will just look a little bit better right off the bat. And now we want our preview text down below. Same thing, we're going to say document dot create element, we're going to create a div. And our preview text inside our inner HTML is going to equal to font preview. This is just the display text. You can choose to use CSS uh, separately, which I did before. But for now, I'm just going to use inline JS. So we're going to say style.color. And we're going to set the style of our or the color, excuse me, of our preview text as white. We're also going to set up the font size. And let's make that something big like 50 or 60 pixels. And then once again, we're just going to add this to our body. And we'll add our preview text instead. So now we have our super basic UI set up a nice big drop down where we can populate all of our Google fonts, and a font preview, where we can actually preview those changes. 
here is actually the reference to the uh, Google API fonts. It is through their actual API where I found this uh, method. And it's basically just a curl method, which requires us to use this link here, plus our API key, which you can generate yourself using your Google developer account. So all we have to do is use this guy. This is going to be our link. And we're going to be passing that to our HP HTTP get function. That's going to be our URL. So what we'll do, we need to do this before we're going to add any of our actual options for our dropdown. So we define our dropdown here. After that, let's say uh, HTTP get is going to return some stuff. So we're going to say uh, font data is equal to HTTP get. And then let's go ahead and create a variable. We can even use let just to... I don't use it very often, but we'll say let uh, URL equal to this link. I will put in my API key where it belongs there, and then we'll use URL inside of here. Now let's go ahead and alert our font data and see what it gives us. As you can see, it appears we have an object. So all we need to do is put in our API key, and then we're gonna get the font data back from our HTTP get function using that URL. and now when we alert that font data, it's going to give us a huge object. If we take a look at the actual developer API here, you can see I didn't have to put in my API key for it to give me this response, but this is what our response is going to look like. Um, and it's going to be this huge object with type kind. It's a web kit font list. Um, and then we have items. So the first thing in our object we need to parse out is the items. And let's double check by saying json.parse that this is an object format. So I'll restart it. And as you can see, when I say parse, we get our object. We're then gonna wanna get the items within it. So we'll say parse our font data, get the items. That's gonna give us a list of other objects. So let's go ahead and say, each one of these is representative of a font, right? So what we can do is then loop through all of these. We'll say four var f is equal to zero, f is less than or equal to, actually just less than our items.length, increment f. Each time through, actually we should only do this a few times because there's gonna be 1450 fonts. So we'll say if f is less than five, we'll just do it a couple times. Alert json.stringify. We wanna see what the contents inside of our current object is by saying, in fact, we should probably parse this before, right? So we'll parse the return of our HTTP get, and so we don't have to keep doing that over and over. Uh, we can just have our font data the items. We'll stringify our font data items index f. And now we should get a, bun a couple of alerts showing us what each font object looks like. So first we have this one here, which is ABZ comes with the family, variants, and if we go back into here where we can view more information, you can see we have all this. So we have family, the variants, the subsets, the version, when it was last modified, any files associated with it. But all we really need to do in order to get this to work inside of our extension is grab the family. So we can simply say, and we don't really need to stringify that because it's gonna give us a string. So when we run this, See, we're gonna get our other fonts. When I rerun this, I'm gonna get just the font family names, which is exactly what we need to add to our CSS, as well as to that bit of code to import the CSS um, file from the Google API. But instead of alerting for each one of these, what we're gonna do is add an option element. So we'll say var option, which is going to go inside of our select or our dropdown. We need to, for each one of these fonts, we need to push the family name into a new dropdown item. So we're gonna say option. We can uh, copy and paste some of this code just to recycle it. Option is gonna be equal to a new option, not a select. We'll set the class name of our option to be option. And instead of the width, we'll say inner HTML of our option which we're going to not be appending to that. We're going to be appending it to our dropdown instead of the body. What is the inner HTML or the text of our uh, dropdown going to, or our dropdown index going to be? It's going to be our font data items. 
the current item, which is item F. And again, we want the family. Then once we're done populating that with our for loop, we're simply going to say dd.selectedIndex is equal to zero, which will select the very first font. So now, as you can see, very quickly even, we've now successfully loaded all of the fonts given to us from Google Fonts into our dropdown. Now all that's left to do is whenever we change this, I want to update this text here. I want to update that font as well as the first time we run it. The first time we run it, it's going to use whatever my extension's default font is, not the one it selects here. So we have this function called function or font change. What this is going to require is our element. So we're switching the sides here so you can see this function better. We have a function here called font change. All this is going to require is our drop down item. And so what we're going to do inside of where we define our drop down here, we're going to say dd.set attribute on change. So whenever we change the drop down value, we're going to run the function called font change and give it this, aka this current drop down element. What this is then going to do is we're going to get our font. What is the font? It's equal to the selected index of our drop down and the inner HTML. Basically, whatever I select of this drop down, maybe it's LC. Uh, it's going to grab whatever the selected index is, this guy here, and the inner HTML of that, which becomes our font family or text that we need. Then we're simply going to grab our preview text, which uh, is why we need to make sure we set the uh, ID of it. So we'll say preview text .set attribute ID preview text. We want to make sure we can grab that later. So we're going to say grab our preview text after we know what our font name is, set the style dot font family equal to whatever our font is. And I'm going to add sans serif in this case, just to make it sans serif. And what this will do, actually, I think I can just remove the sans serif and that will just use the font. Um, so we have the font family CSS style being set after we get the actual font. Now to make sure that it recognizes what that font reference is referring to here, we need to add the CSS to our HTML page. The way we're going to do this is simply by using these wonderful types of uh, inline code we can add by using these types of characters here. And we're simply going to add the link relative style sheet uh, using the href of our API endpoint here. And then we're going to use this little thing here. This is something I've learned recently that is super fun to do, where when you have inline code, you can type in a, a name between these brackets, say it's font or font family. And then what we can do is replace that later on with our font. So that's one way to quickly replace inline variables. And what we're going to do with this quick CSS line we typed up here, which is just, again, the API endpoint with our font family name. We haven't quite defined it yet, but we're about to replace it. We're going to add inner HTML to the head of our document. And what we're going to do is replace our CSS text here where it says font family with our actual font family variable. A little bit complicated there, but this is basically going to allow it so that anytime we click on a new font, it's now going to update to actually use that font on our preview text. Now, one last thing you'll notice is that when we first launch it, it doesn't do anything. So after we've done our main generation here, I'm simply going to call our font change function. And remember, we require an argument, which is this dropdown. So we'll provide the dropdown variable. And now the first time it will load is ABZ. And now we have a working extension, which can both browse and change our extension fonts to be any of these many, many Google fonts we can choose from. I'll be sure to post the code for this in the description down below. It's just a add on to the extension testing extension that I've made previously. And you guys can check out the code and modify it and use it for your own use and get these fonts used in your extensions. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel and down in the description. You can follow us on GitHub for coding updates and get this code and also follow us down there on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member in our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so by becoming a member or supporter. Link for that is in the description, and that helps us out financially while giving you cool perks. You can also check out the other links down below to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to see some other cool stuff I make. Thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.